Am I the asshole for denying an older woman shelter from a storm? I'm going to say no. But when I see old women, I think of that woman when they were um, looting the targets and whatever back in like, oh, 2020. Yeah. And like one of, the, one of the women were like trying to stab people because yeah. they were stealing. And then they parried it on an episode of Atlanta. <laughs> Wow, Where, I miss that. Yeah, they they had her. They were looting, and Darius, the character, was like he was he was trying to return something in the middle of the looting. He's like, oh, no one's around, so he's leaving, and she's like trying to stab him. She's in a wheelchair, and for the rest of the entire episode, she's following him throughout the episode. He's like, oh, get away from me. He's like, shh, shh. But I I didn't know about the story before the episode, so I was like, this is funny, and I'm like, no, this is a real thing. I, 23 female, am an avid hiker in Australia. Last week, I encountered a middle-aged woman around 50 years old as I was coming off a trail. She was walking in my direction as I came out of the bush. It was strange to see her. The sun was almost down and the weather was starting to turn. Also, this was an intermediate collection of trails at best. Difficult even for me at worst, and she didn't look super athletic. Point is, my weird radar was going off already. She walked up to me and stopped, standing too close for my comfort, gestured towards the clearing where my car was parked, and asked whether it was my car. No greeting or anything. When I looked over, something made me uncomfortable. There was no other cars than mine in sight. The trail I was on isn't crazy far from civilization, but it's not a walk away. One of those highway rest stops that's there for the trail in a few parking spots. No way she could have gotten there without driving. I let her know that, yes, it was my car, to which she responded something like, Perfect, there's a storm coming. I can't be caught in it and I need to get home. She was very matter-of-fact and it seemed like she had already decided what would happen without waiting for my response. And she started striding for my car and I'm glad I always locked my doors because she would have hopped right into the passenger seat had the door been opened. As she was walking over, I went after her trying to explain that I wasn't sure if it was a good idea for her to hitch a ride, asking why she was out here in the first place. I was talking to a brick wall until she realized the car was locked, at which point she turned around with the look of anger and frustration on her face. She starts ranting the same stuff as before. I need to get home. A storm is coming. I cannot be caught in it. Why don't you get it? I was confused at this point and a little scared, as this woman was now a barrier between me and my vehicle. I told her something like, I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable with having a stranger in my car. She stared down at me for a few seconds. I guess trying to gauge her chances at asking again. And just like that, the anger drops from her face and she's silent. I was really uncomfortable. I asked if I could call someone, if there was another way to help. She starts walking towards me, scarily, and then right past me. I'm still asking her questions. Then just saying things like, hello and excuse me, no response. She walked to the other end of the rest stop and maintained eye contact with me just as she sat down on a log and then stared at nothing. I didn't follow her. I got into my car really shaken up and I drove away. As soon as I was back in the cell range, I called for fire and rescue. They said they would send somebody out. I was scared for my safety in that moment, but she was just some woman alone in the middle of nowhere. Am I the asshole for refusing the strange woman a ride slash shelter in my car? Am I the asshole for telling my fiance my daughter has to be in our wedding? I, 45 male, have a daughter, P, from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms and we share 50-50 custody of P. She's now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiance, S. S and my daughter get along really well. After five years in my relationship with S, I proposed. S was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. Then she told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted P to be a flower girl. S looked at me funny and then said that she didn't think that P would fit the part. <laughs> I got angry and told S that my daughter would be in our wedding. S started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and P wouldn't be one of them. I told S that if P wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. Oh. I stormed oh. out and took P to get ice cream. P knows that we're getting married and told me that she thinks she'll look pretty in whatever dress S decides that she should wear. This broke my heart and I decided to text S. I told her that I would be staying at a friend's house to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying that I'm overreacting and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding and that I was an ass for saying that I would cancel. 
to answer a few questions, my daughter is not disabled, chubby, or have an awkward phase slash, you know, braces or glasses. I did ask if P could be a groomsman. S immediately shot me down. S is 39. She's the same race as my daughter. This is her first marriage. I tried to answer as many comments as possible. I came home to talk to S today. When I pulled in our driveway, my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. Mm. I got out, went inside, and tried to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Mm. S was sitting at the kitchen table, and I joined her. She sat in silence, so I asked the first question. Why does P not fit the part? And why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answer full-on shocked me. She mm. quietly said, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become a holiday visit only dad. <laughs> I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool, <laughs> calmly took her hand and pulled off my engagement ring. Her eyes started to tear up. She said we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change. I told her I told her the damage was already done. I told her I wanted her things moved out by next week and that she could come get them when oh. my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get furniture that she paid for. Oh. She stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying that I was being unreasonable. No, that's crazy. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three to four times a year. The fact that S wanted me to give up my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and P will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. Am I the <laughs> asshole for forcing my stepdaughter to cut her hair? Yes. I, 31, met my husband, 34 male, eight years ago, and we have been married for six years. He has an 11-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. I work from home, so I mainly end up taking care of her. I have since she was young. We have a generally good relationship. She mm. stays at her mother's most weekends. She has incredibly long, blonde, wavy hair, just mm. past her bottom. It's a Very nightmare chill. to take care yeah. of. It frequently tangles, and she always needs help brushing and styling it before school. I'm not a morning person, and I do not like having to wake up early to do a kid's hair. It's expensive to maintain, as she requires more products. She insists on using hair oils, which can cost around $11 and only last for a few weeks. She also insists that she has to use curly hair shampoo instead of regular shampoo and conditioner, which is often over $10 per bottle, and she goes through it at a fast rate. She won't use a regular brush on it as she insists it breaks her hair and hurts, so she uses a wide tooth comb, which takes a long time to brush when she could be doing other more productive things such as homework or helping me with chores <laughs> i decided she has become obsessed with her hair and i do not want her to become vain so i decided it needs to be cut i don't see it as a big deal as i've always had shoulder length hair as my hair does not grow very fast and i get frequent trims it's a lot more practical i took her to the hairdressers as normal in the car on the way down she said that she wants to make sure the hairdresser doesn't cut too much I politely explained that I would like her to cut her hair to shoulder length at it, as it has become a burden. At first she thought I was joking, but then she realized and she started to cry. When we got to the salon, the hairdresser was reluctant to cut her hair due to her tears, but I explained the trouble we had mm. maintaining it and assured cutting it was best for her. In the end, the stylist agreed and cut her hair. <laughs> the stylist braided her hair, then cut it. Mm -mm. She kept it. Her hair was now just past shoulder length, and it looked a lot darker. The car journey home was silent. I offered her McDonald's, but she refused. She went straight to her room when we got back. My husband went up to see her when he got home, and apparently found her on her bed, sobbing, holding her old hair. My husband immediately called her mother to come and collect her as soon as my stepdaughter was out of the door. He started yelling. Her mother also came in and gave me a mouthful. I explained my reasoning, but my husband wouldn't budge. He said if I had an issue, he would have did her hair in the mornings and that he didn't mind paying for the products. He was so furious that he said he no longer trusts me around his daughter mm. and doesn't know if he can be with a woman who he doesn't trust with her. This broke my heart. I didn't mean her any harm. I was just tired and I'm trying to reduce stress. 
I've always been the one to raise her and her brother, and I'm just exhausted. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for purchasing my guy friend his dream birthday present and outshining his girlfriend in the process? My guy friend, Tom, has been one of my <laughs> best friends since college. We're in our mid-20s now, and we're both currently in committed relationships with long-term partners. I've never had feelings for Tom, nor has he ever had feelings mm -hmm. for me. Uh oh <laughs> Oh. Since college, Tom has been a huge watch fanatic. Two months ago, he was showing me this stunning vintage watch and made an offhanded comment about how he would die of joy if somehow he got his hands on one. Very coincidentally, I was in New York City a few weeks ago and stumbled upon this watch store that just so happened to have the exact one that Tom wanted. It was expensive, I won't lie, at about $2,500, but I decided to get it for his 25th birthday. To me, it was basically fate. My boyfriend and I do very well financially, so this was something that I could personally afford and wanted to buy for Tom especially knowing how happy it would make him. Tom has a tradition of hosting a dinner party at his place for his birthday and then following that up with cake and gift opening. I told him before the dinner that my gift was a huge surprise and asked if he could save it for last and he agreed. His girlfriend ends up going first and she gets him this gorgeous sweater that was crocheted for him and a book that he's been wanting, which I thought was super thoughtful and yeah. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> last, it was my gift and when he opened it, and saw what it was, he literally screamed, hopped over a bunch of people, squeezed me in a huge bear hug. I was so happy to see him happy. It genuinely filled me with so much joy. He even got emotional, and I saw him wipe a few tears. He also said that it was the best gift he'd ever received. The whole time, his girlfriend was only slightly smiling and stayed <laughs> quiet. Mm -hmm. The next morning, I got a text from his girlfriend that essentially said that although she appreciated my thoughtful gift, she thought it was a bit out of touch and lacking awareness. She admitted that Tom had also told her about the watch and she wanted to get it for him, but it was way out of her budget. She accused me of knowing this, I had no idea, and still getting it to rub it in her face and to outshine her. She finished by saying how she felt like I had overstepped a boundary by getting the gift and would appreciate me not doing anything similar again in the future. I responded and told her that while I could see her point, I was just trying to do a nice thing for a close friend of mine. I asked her, wouldn't you rather he gotten the gift and seen the happiness that it brought him than him not getting it at all? She responded that the happiness was only shared between me and Tom and no one else and that she felt hurt by my actions. Only my boyfriend knows about this and he's on my side. By thinking through it all again, I do see how I could have overstepped, but my boyfriend says that it's not my job to apologize for her insecurities. So, am I the asshole here? Am I the asshole for telling my poor friend that he's actually the privileged one now? Oh, no. <laughs> one of my very close friends, Nathan, 29 male, and I, 28 male, met during our first post-college job at a prestigious finance firm. And we immediately bonded over the long work hours, shitty middle management, and general soul-sucking nature of making PowerPoint slides and Excel sheets all day. For the next few years, a lot of our friendship revolved around us talking about work and how much we hated it. A few years ago, I decided that I couldn't take the corporate grind anymore, and I quit my job to move into the nonprofit world. While I'm now certainly making less than I would have at my old job, I'm exponentially happier, healthier, and absolutely love the work that I do. I also still make a very good salary, 80000 a year, which I feel is more than enough money for me and my needs. Nathan has been ambitiously climbing the corporate ladder and recently became a VP at his firm. Oh he God, makes well Nathan. over $300,000 okay, a year. Okay, Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathan grew up in a very poor family and his relatives are still financially unstable and often ask him for money. I, on the other hand, grew up in a comfortable upper middle class suburb with parents who have always been financially stable. They're not millionaires, but if anything ever happened to me, they could and would help me until I could get back on my feet. Nathan does not have that privilege. I recently got offered my dream job where I would be making slightly less money than I am now, 75k a year. Despite the money, I'm genuinely giddy about this job prospect and was pumped to tell my friends. However, when I told Nathan, his response was, I'm glad you have the financial privilege to take a pay cut. Not, wow, I know you've been really wanting this job for months now and have told me all about how excited you are. Congratulations or anything along those lines. 
I'll admit that I snapped back at him and I told him that he makes triple the amount of money that I do and that at some point he needs to realize he's now got privileges of his own instead of pointing out mine. The conversation got a bit heated and we agreed to hang up and cool off before talking it over later. Now I'm wondering if I should apologize to Nathan for what I said or if I should stand my ground. I'm feeling angry and a bit defensive, which I realize is exactly the reaction that a spoiled rich kid would have. However, I do think it was a bit mean of him to say that at that exact moment when I was so excited. And while generational wealth does give privileges that income alone does not, he literally does make over triple the amount of money that I make now. So it seems a tiny bit hypocritical for him to be calling me privileged. As a final note, while my parents certainly are well off, they do not support me financially in any way and have not since I graduated from college seven years ago. So I leave the judgment to you all. Am I the asshole?